In this video, we're going to build on our previous video. We're going through a series of videos working with the free version of CML. And you might remember from our previous video that we set up trunking. We had three switches and we created trunks between those switches. Well, now we're going to import the YAML file that we saved at the end of that lab. And we're going to build on that. We're going to configure a feature called VTP, and that's the VLAN trunking protocol. Uh, some literature calls it the VLAN trunk protocol, but what it allows us to do is to create a VLAN on one switch and have that newly created VLAN be propagated and advertised out to all the other switches in our switch topology. And this can be a huge time saver. Imagine that we had, let's say, 25 switches in our topology, and I needed to create five VLANs on every switch. That's a lot of work if I have to go do it switch by switch by switch. The good news is with VTP, I'm able to create it one time on one switch and it's just going to get advertised out to everybody else. And all those other switches are going to learn about that newly created VLAN. Now, of course, if you have one or two switches that you don't want to have that VLAN or be updated with VLAN advertisements, you don't have to. We can say that it's a transparent mode switch and it's going to be sort of like an island unto itself. It doesn't have to respond to those advertisements. Now, let's go out to our live topology once again, import the YAML file that we saved last time, and let's configure VTP. All right, let's begin by importing the YAML file that we created last time. And no worries if you did not export a YAML file from the trunking lab. You can see it's a very basic topology once I get it imported. If I take a look, we only have three switches, SW1, SW2, and SW3. And you see that I've just connected SW1 to the other switches via a trunk link. That's it. We're going to begin with that basic topology and we're going to configure VTP. And I mentioned that it's called the VLAN trunking protocol in some literature. You know, I really wish it was called something else. I wish it were called the VLAN advertisement protocol because that's what it does. It's going to advertise VLANs out to its neighbors. And depending on the neighbor's configuration, they're going to be able to update their VLAN database based on those advertisements. Now let's go to SW1 and get started. And the first thing I want to do is to create a VTP domain name. Now that's not required for VTP version 2, which we're going to look at first, but it is a requirement for VTP version 3. And VTP version 2, I want to look at that because it was popular for years. There's a lot of it out there. But if you're configuring VTP today, I would recommend you highly consider VTP version 3. But here's how to create a VTP domain or assign a switch to a VTP domain. Let's go into global configuration mode, and I'm gonna say VTP domain KW train, and I'm gonna set the VTP version to version two. And interestingly, before I assigned that domain name, we belong to the null domain. All the switches belong to the null domain. And when I made those two changes right there, those changes got advertised out to switch SW2 and SW3, so they should be already configured. Let's confirm the configuration on SW1 first. I'll do a show VTP status command, and we are running version 2, and our domain name is kwtrain. Oh, also notice this. This is important. The configuration revision number. I'd like you to know that every time I make a change to the VLAN database, I create a VLAN, I name a VLAN, I delete a VLAN, anything like that, it's going to increment that configuration revision number by one. And the goal is for all the switches in our topology to have a common configuration revision number. So if I make a change on this switch, my revision number goes up to a two. So all the other switches in the topology, they're going to look to me because I've got the highest configuration revision number and all the other switches will adopt my version of the VLAN database. That could be good, but it could be bad. We'll discuss that more in a moment. But for now, let's go make sure that VTP version 2 and the domain name that has been set on our other switches. What about SW2? Let's do a show VTP status. VTP version 2, KW train. Notice that it has a matching configuration revision number. What about SW3? Let's do a show VTP status. Same thing here. Version 2, KW train, configuration revision number of 1. Excellent. And the basic job of VTP is to allow us to create a VLAN on one switch and have that propagated and learned by the other switches. So let's go to SW1 and I'm going to create a few VLANs. Let's create VLAN 100. I'll give it a name of 
engineering. Let's create VLAN 200. I'll give it a name of HR. Let's create a VLAN 300. I'll give it a name of sales. And if I do a show VLAN brief command, we can see our newly created VLANs. Now let's see if VTP did its job. Let's go to SW2. Does it also know about these newly created VLANs? Let's do a show VLAN brief. Yes, it does. It knows about VLANs 100, 200, and 300. What about SW3? Let's do a show VLAN brief command there. And we do know about those three VLANs. And on SW3, if I do a show VTP status once again, you'll see that my VTP operating mode is server. You see, with VTP version 2, we've got three different modes of operation. By default, we're going to be in server mode. And a server mode switch is allowed to create, modify, or delete a VLAN. There's also a client mode. Now, in client mode, we cannot create, delete, or modify VLANs but we can hear VLAN advertisements coming into us and we can update our database based on those advertisements. But we're just not going to be able to make any creations or deletions or modifications locally. And the other mode is transparent mode. That's where we make a switch sort of like an island. It doesn't want to update its VLAN database based on received advertisements. So it will be a good team player and it will forward any received VTP advertisements to downstream switches so they can update their databases. But if we're in transparent mode, we're not going to update our database, but we still have full control of our database locally. And uh, the changes we make to a transparent mode switch, that's not going to be advertised to anybody else. Let's experiment with that. On SW3, let's say that my VTP mode is transparent. And I'm going to create VLAN 500, and I'm going to give it a name of IT. If I do a show VLAN brief on SW3, there is my newly created VLAN in addition to the other VLANs I already had, but I've got VLAN 500. Did that VLAN get advertised and learned by the other switches? Let's go to SW1, show VLAN brief. No VLAN 500 there. What about SW2? Show VLAN brief. Same thing, no VLAN 500. And that's because we created that on a transparent mode switch. Now let's set SW2 to that other mode we talked about, the client mode. Let's say VTP mode client. And if I'm in client mode, I cannot create, modify, or delete a VLAN. Let's prove that. If I try to create VLAN 600, it's going to say, nope, you cannot do that because you are in client mode. But I can still hear advertisements from other switches in my VTP topology, and I can update my VLAN database based on those advertisements. For example, let's go to SW1, and let's create a VLAN here. Let's say VLAN 400. And its name is accounting. That's going to be learned locally by SW1. There's the accounting VLAN. Did it get learned by my client mode switch? Show VLAN brief. Yes, it did. But it should not have been learned by my transparent mode switch. Show VLAN brief. No VLAN 400 there. And earlier I hinted that there might be an issue involving that configuration revision number. Let me show you what I mean. Let's go back to SW1, our server. And if I do a show VTP status, notice that my configuration revision number has grown to a five because of all the VLANs we've been creating. Well, let's imagine for a second that I get a brand new switch in the mail. I'm configuring it on my desktop in my office. It's not connected to the network. And I'm just playing with some of the features. I'm creating VLANs, I'm deleting VLANs. And once I've deleted all the VLANs that I've created, I'm ready to go take the switch and put it into the production network. I don't want anybody else to create a VLAN on the switch, so I set its mode to client mode. Is that going to be a problem? It could be a very big problem. Let's imagine that I created and deleted and renamed a bunch of VLANs, and my configuration revision number is now a 20 while the current configuration revision number of our actual VTP production domain is 15. Even though I'm in client mode, even though I cannot create a VLAN on that switch, I still have the higher configuration revision number as compared to all the other switches. So when I introduce even a client mode switch to the network, because my configuration revision number is higher, it is going to blow away all of the VLAN databases of all the other switches in my topology, and they're all going to take on that newly added switches VLAN database. 
And I mentioned that in my office, I had deleted all the VLANs that I created. So except for VLAN 1, we just deleted all the VLANs in our topology. That is an issue. How do we prevent that? Well, personally, before I add a switch to a topology, I like to set its mode to transparent mode. Because if I set the mode to transparent mode, as we can see on SW3, if I do a show VTP status here, a transparent mode switch has its configuration revision number set to a zero. So it's not going to override anybody's VLAN database. And as another precaution, I like to go in and delete the VLAN.dat file from the flash of a switch before I add it to the topology. And as one more precaution, I like to have a password set up so somebody's not going to be able to accidentally or intentionally corrupt my VLAN database if they don't know the VTP password. Here's how we set up that password for our VTP domain. Let's go into each switch and I'll say VTP password. And for this lab, I'll just give a easy to remember password like Cisco. You probably want to use a different password in the real world, but I'll set the password on every switch to Cisco. Configuration terminal, VTP password, Cisco, and one switch to go. VTP password, Cisco. And that's a look at the configuration of VTP version 2. Now let's consider VTP version 3. And version 3 does add several features. For example, it allows us to advertise extended VLANs. VTP version 2 didn't do that. And extended VLAN, by the way, that's a VLAN in the range of 1006 through 4094. And if you're doing remote monitoring of traffic with RSpan Remote Switchboard Analyzer, there is a VLAN dedicated to that RSpan operation. Well, VTP version 3 can advertise that RSpan VLAN. If you're using a multi-instance spanning tree, MST, VLANs in that MST environment, they can be advertised. And in addition to server and client and transparent modes, we also have an off mode. And if we set a VTP version 3 switch to off mode, it is not going to participate in VTP at all. Not only will it not update its database based on received advertisements, it will not even forward an advertisement that it receives from an upstream switch. It will not even forward that downstream. And I think one of the best features of VTP version 3 is that it gives us another layer of protection. What I mean is, even if I have a server mode switch that gets introduced into the network, that server mode switch is still not going to be able to create or modify or delete VLANs because it needs to be a primary server in order to do that. Our VTP domain is going to have one and only one primary server, and it is in charge of all the VLAN database manipulation. That's the only switch we can do that from. And let's demonstrate that by going to each of our switches and setting up VTP version 3. I'll say VTP version 3. Let's go to SW2. VTP version 3. And we'll go to SW3. VTP version 3. Now, back on SW1, if I do a show VTP status, notice that my status is server, but look at this. If I go in and try to create a new VLAN, it's going to say, nope, you're not allowed to do that because you're not the primary server. So how do we make this a primary server? Well, this is very interesting and non-intuitive, I think. If I try to set this to a primary server, I might expect to say something like VTP primary, but if I look at the context sensitive help, that's not an option. Here's why. We actually make a switch a VTP primary server from not global configuration mode or really any configuration mode, we do it from privilege mode. Look at this, notice my prompt. I'm in privilege mode and I'm gonna say VTP primary. And it takes a few seconds to turn it on and it's gonna come back in a moment and ask if I want to confirm that I really wanna make this a primary server. And yes, I do. Now, if I do a show VTP status, my operating mode is now a primary server. So yes, I can now create a VLAN. Let's prove it. Can I create VLAN 800 now? Yes, I can. And by the way, if you want to migrate to a VTP version 3 in your topology, it doesn't necessarily have to be an overnight forklift upgrade where you update every single switch because VTP version 3, it is compatible with VTP version 2. But if you have any switches in your topology running VTP version 1, that could be an issue because VTP version 3 is not compatible with VTP version 1. And now that we've considered VTP versions 2 and 3, let's now save our configuration for our next video. And in our next video, we're going to add a link to this topology. 
And then we are going to play around with Spanning Tree Protocol, STP. So let's go to our Nodes tab. I'll select all my nodes. I'll say I want to extract configs. Then I'll go to my Lab tab and I'll say Download Lab. And I should probably rename this lab to our VTP Lab. Now let me download the lab. That'll have a more intuitive name for me. So next time in our STP video, we can start off by importing this VTP YAML file. And that's a look at the VLAN trunking protocol. I'll see you next time.